Hello, this is Gernge with another quick tip video. Did you know that you can make practically any node, texture, or whatever else into a custom AOV inside of Redshift? This will allow a lot of flexibility in post, so let's just get right into how all of it works, and you'll see how powerful this ability is. In this demo scene, I've got a bit of 3D text that we'll be using. We can see we've got some gold text, and then we have a surface imperfections map, and this is adding in some of the red color. So if you're not familiar with the AOV manager, this is how we add in multi-passes. But using this list here, we wouldn't have anything specifically for the surface imperfections. So back inside of our shading network, we can search for color AOV. Clicking on the inputs, we see it has a beauty input. So let's connect our standard material to that. Over here, I have my scalar ramp, which is adjusting the levels of my surface imperfections map. This is what I want to connect. So we'll bring this into AOV input zero. Now selecting the node, we can see in this drop-down menu, we want to create a new custom AOV. So I'll name this drips. Then I wanna make sure I connect the color AOV node to the output. Now pop open the AOV manager to confirm the newly created AOV looks right and it's got the right name. I'll also opt for a direct output instead of a multi output because that's my personal preference. Next, I'll change the compression to DWAB, which will save on storage space and load well in After Effects. So we haven't seen anything happen just yet, but in the render view, if we switch from the beauty pass to our custom AOV pass, we can see that we have this nice mask. So using this layer in post now, I could adjust the color or tweak this without needing to re-render the whole sequence. So that's really awesome. So that was a pretty basic example. Let's try another one that's a little bit more in depth. We can see that I've set this up already to transition us from this darker blue material to this sort of silver. So that's set up with a ramp connected to an animated UV projection node, which I've already covered in another quick tip video if you wanna get up to speed on the UV projection node, it's really handy. So if we look through this first color layer node, we'll see that this is the transition mask, which is converting from one material to the other. And then the second color layer, if I look through this, this is just the transition point. So I'm layering things a little bit differently in this node because let's just say on this leading edge of the transition, I want to make this glow in After Effects, just to make up an example. So we'll look through our store color AOV node, and we can see that I need to create this. So I'll name it blend noise. Again, just double check my AOV manager. Cool, so that's looking pretty good. Another bonus I like to do when setting up 3D text examples like this is setting up a bevel or an edge curvature so that way I can do the classic sort of light shine effect or rim light. So grabbing a curvature node and looking through it, we can see that this is highlighting just the edges of our text. So we can create a new AOV and call that text bevel. Again, it's usually a good habit to just come into the AOV manager and just double check as well as refresh the render view just to make sure that you see what you're getting. Flipping this to text bevel, we can see that this is looking pretty nice. With this particular font, I'm not exactly a fan of the fact that this curves and sort of shows right here. So I wanna set this up a little bit differently. So looking through this node, we can see that it's giving us red, blue, and green color, which is actually corresponding to the different world axes. Now, in my particular case, I've set this scene up in the Z axis. So that's actually the blue channel here. So what I wanna do is I wanna use a color splitter and I'm gonna connect in my round corners node and then we're gonna only look through the blue output. And this is giving us the front or the Z axis. I can then use another scalar ramp to just kind of pump this up a bit. So this is still giving me the edge highlights but it's not giving me that sort of rounding along the corner of this particular font. We'll connect this to our AOV input now. So if I scrub back a bit through the animation, we see we've got our blend noise as well as our text bevel. So we could animate a fake light shine or a rim light using this. I think these are a good couple examples for you to get an idea of how the custom AOVs can help you in production. It really is limitless, so have fun coming up with creative applications for them. I'm sure they can help save you a lot of trouble and perhaps prevent unnecessary re-renders because they can allow you to be more flexible in post and they can even be used creatively to elevate what you're designing, so please try them out. That'll wrap up things for now. I hope you've enjoyed this month of quick tip videos. I'll be taking a bit of a break now, but I really appreciate the amount of positive feedback so far.
and like always, thank you so much for watching.